Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 3, Lesson 5, Thumbelina. Our purpose for listening today is to identify the elements of stories and folktales. We also want to identify the similarities and differences in two folktales, Tom Thumb and Thumbelina. Listen carefully to understand the word scarcely. Can you say scarcely? Remember, people all around the world love listening to and telling stories. Some of the stories that are told around the world are similar to each other, even though the stories were started or originated in different places. Let's think what's in a story. Our story elements are characters, that's who the people or animals that the story is about, the setting, where and when the story takes place, plot is what happens in the story, or the events of a story in order, the beginning, middle and end, and conflict. Conflict in a story is a problem the characters face. Characters in different stories from around the world might have similar conflicts or problems. Our story today is a folk tale. It was written down in Denmark long ago by a man named Hans Christian Andersen. Denmark is on the continent of Europe. Listen carefully to hear how the folk tales of Thumbelina and Tom Thumb are similar and different. Once there was a woman who wanted a child more than anything in the world. At last, in loneliness and sorrow, she went to a wise old woman and spoke of her desire. That's as easy as winking, said the wise old woman. Take this seed and plant it in a flower pot filled with good, rich earth. Water it carefully and guard it very well. The woman did as the wise old woman had said. The first time she watered the seed, a large and brilliant flower sprang up. It was still a bud, its petals tightly closed. The woman bent to kiss the flower, but the moment her lips touched the silky petals, they began to open. The woman could not believe her eyes. There inside sat a tiny little girl. She was perfectly formed, as graceful as the flower from which she came. When the woman held her, she discovered that the tiny girl was scarcely the size of her thumb. Scarcely means barely, hardly, or almost not. Though she was a wonderful child in every way, she never grew at all. She was called Thumbelina and was treated with, with great extravagance and care. Her cradle was a polished walnut shell each night she slept between fresh flower petals. In the daytime, she liked to sit on a table and sing in the sunlight. Her voice was very beautiful, high and haunting and silvery. One night as she lay sleeping, a toad hopped in at the window. What a lovely way for my son, she said. Without even looking around her, she took up the walnut shell and hopped off with it to the garden. Here, look what I brought you, said the toad proudly to her son, but the only sound he could utter was croak, croak, croak. Don't talk so loud or you'll wake her, complained the mother toad. She might still run away from us. So the mother toad and her son went back to their home near the stream's edge. They placed Thumbelina on a lily pad in the middle of the water so that she could not escape. In the morning, 
Thumbelina woke up and looked all around her at the great arching sky. She felt her lily pad rock with the motion of the stream and cried out in terror. The mother toad and her son heard Thumbelina crying and went to see what was the matter. Thinking that Thumbelina was just crying out of loneliness, they ignored her and returned to making wedding plans. Upon hearing her sobs, a fish swimming in the water below came to the surface and looked curiously at Thumbelina. A butterfly also heard the cries and flew over to see what was wrong. Oh, please help me, she said. I must get away from here. And so the fish began to gnaw or bite at the lily stalk with its sharp teeth. Lily pads have a stalk under the water. The stalk was holding the lily pad in place. At last, the leaf broke free and floated down the stream. Away went Thumbelina, gently spinning with the current. Gradually, her fear left her and she began to enjoy the journey. Never before had she been outside. Thumbelina floated down the river far, far away from the mother toad and her son. It was summertime and she spent the next several months drifting peacefully from place to place along the shore. When it rained, she slept under a large spreading leaf to shelter herself from the rain. For food, she sipped nectar from the flowers, ate wild berries, and drank the dew that lay on the leaves at dawn. All the while she listened to the birds chirping in the trees above her and made friends with butterflies that floated on the breeze nearby. Before long though, summer came to an end and autumn quickly passed. The cold chill of winter soon filled the air. There were no more berries for food. All the birds and butterflies had disappeared. Thumbelina was cold and hungry. Now she was truly alone, and the place was a foreign land to her, very unfamiliar. And then it started to snow. The snow came at her in white swirling clouds, and she quickly wrapped herself up in a leaf, curled up under a mushroom, and tried to keep herself dry. Not far away, a field mouse was gathering some last bits of kindling to burn in her fireplace during the winter. When she saw Thumbelina, she said, My poor dear, you are nearly frozen with cold. You must come home and spend the winter with me. I have plenty to eat and my home is warm and dry. Thumbelina gracefully accepted the invitation and followed the field mouse to a small hole in the ground. As they descended into the tunnel, Thumbelina realized that she was in the snug, small dwelling or home of the field mouse. Corn was piled up all around her and its smell was in the air. Please, said Thumbelina, could I have a bit of corn to eat? You poor dear, the field mouse answered kindly. You had better come into my room and have dinner with me. The two got on well together, and after some days, the field mouse invited Thumbelina to work for her and stay the winter. Every day, Thumbelina helped the field mouse with her housework, and they would spend the rest of the day enjoying a cup of tea and chatting before the fire. Thumbelina soon grew very fond of the field mouse, she was happy to have found such a good and kind friend. Late one evening, the field mouse said to dust the floor and polish everything in the room until it shone. An important visitor was coming to call. This was a mole who was very rich and wore a sleek velvet coat, but he had poor eyesight and even with his glasses, he could barely see. He hated the sun and mocked all the creatures that lived outside. The field mouse, however, was impressed by the mole's riches. 
she told Thumbelina to sing for him and tell stories of her travels. As he listened to Thumbelina's beautiful voice, the mole fell in love with her. The next time he came to visit, he said he would show them his rooms underground. By the pale light of a piece of torch wood, he led them through a long, twisting passage. Suddenly, they came upon a swallow lying sprawled in the passageway. Thumbelina felt very sorry for the swallow, but the mole kicked at him with his stumpy legs. What a pitiful life to be a bird, he said. A creature who does nothing all day but fly from branch to branch is not prepared for winter. Thumbelina said nothing and let the mole and the field mouse walk on ahead. Goodbye, Swallow, she said. It might have been you who sang to me this summer when all the trees were green. She laid her head on his soft feathers for a moment and then darted back in fear. Something moved inside him with a slow, steady rhythm of a heartbeat. The bird was not dead. He was merely numbed with cold. The warmth of Thumbelina's body had stirred him back to life. Each night after that, she crept out of bed to tend the swallow. As he grew stronger, he told her how he had torn his wing on a thorn bush. The other swallows had flown away to the warm countries, but he had not been able to keep up with them. At last, he could go no farther and plummeted to the ground. Thumbelina kept the swallow a secret from the field mouse and the mole. When spring warmed the earth once more, Thumbelina knew it was time for the swallow to go. His wing had healed. Each night he fluttered it over and over again, strengthening it for flying. Won't you come with me? He asked her. You can easily sit upon my back and I will carry you away into the leafy woods. But Thumbelina could not bring herself to abandon the field mouse who had kept her from starving. She made a hole in the roof of the passageway and watched longingly as the swallow flew out into the sunshine. Every evening now, the mole came to call on Thumbelina. He made her sing until her voice grew hoarse. Whenever she stopped, he prodded her to continue. This was the way he loved her. Without ever once asking Thumbelina, the mole and the field mouse agreed that she would be married to him in autumn. But Thumbelina did not want to marry the mole, and she wept bitterly. Every morning when the sun rose and every evening when it set, she was allowed to go to the door sill and stand outside. In the heat of August, the corn had grown as high as a forest. When the wind blew the stalks apart, she could see bright pieces of sky. How beautiful it was. She did not know how she would live deep inside the earth with the mole, whom she now despised more than ever. As the time of her wedding drew closer, she sobbed out her fears to the field mouse. Nonsense, the field mouse said. Don't be stubborn. His velvet coat is handsome and the food in his pantry is fit for a queen. Thumbelina understood then that she was trapped as surely as if she were in a cage. Summer was ending and she knew she would never be able to survive outside through the harsh, cold months of winter. But now the wedding day had come. For the last time, she crept to the door sill to stand in the sunshine. She knew the mole would never permit her to leave his side. She wept as she felt the warmth upon her face and made ready to go back into the earth. Then suddenly above her, she heard a shower of notes, a glorious morning song. She looked up and there was the swallow. The cold winter is coming again, he said, flying down to her. I've looked for you many times, and now I must fly away to the warm countries. Won't you come with me? I'll take you to where it is always summer. This time, Thumbelina did not hesitate. 
She climbed upon the swallow's back. Then he rose up into the sky. They flew over forests and fields high above mountains with snow-capped peaks. When Thumbelina felt cold in the bleak air, she crept under the swallow's feathers. At last, they arrived in the warm countries. The sun beat down upon the earth, and the light was clear as crystal. Lemons and oranges hung on the trees, and the air was fragrant with the smell of spices. The swallow flew on until they came to a dazzling white palace. In the pillars were many nests, and one of these was the swallow's home. I dearly love you and yearn to keep you with me, said the swallow sadly, but I do not think you could live up as high as I do, for when the wind comes, you might fall. Why don't you take one of the flowers that grow below for your home? At least we shall be neighbors. Thumbelina did not remember that she had lived before in a flower, but the idea seemed to be a good one. The swallow set her gently on the petals of a brilliantly colored flower. Then she slid inside. But this could not be, she thought. The home was already taken. A young man was standing there, shining as if he had been made of glass. A gold crown was on his head and gauzy wings grew from his back. Isn't he wonderful, thought Thumbelina. Never before had she seen a person just her size. The young man explained to Thumbelina that a small person lived in each of these flowers. He was their king. Then he took off his crown and placed it upon Thumbelina's head. You are so lovely, he said. Won't you be my queen? Thumbelina never thought to refuse. She could tell he was kind by the sound of his voice and the curve of his mouth. She felt that at last she had come home. Then the king declared that there was to be a welcoming party, more joyful than any seen before in the land. From all the flowers, men and women came, bringing gifts for Thumbelina. But the most wonderful was a pair of tiny wings that could be fastened to her back, so she too could dart among the flowers. Everyone danced all night, and above them in his nest was the swallow, singing for them his most heartwarming tune. I hope you loved our story today. Think of the characters, the animals or people that our story is about, the setting. Where did our story take place? Quite a few places in Thumbelina's travels. What about the plot? What happened in the beginning, the middle, and then the end? And the conflict. What problem did Thumbelina face in our story today? As you think of those things, think about how they're similar or different to our story, Tom Thumb. Thanks for learning with me. Have a wonderful day.